started in just a minute with our ADU loan program through Housing Trust, Silicon Valley. We will get started um, with this webinar. Um, thank you to those who have joined and, and I know more people will start coming in, um, but welcome Bonnie and Sonia. Both of them are with the Housing Trust Silicon Valley. Uh, my name is Jody Souza and I'm your education and events manager here at SCORE. So we're gonna get started with our ADU construction loan program. Uh, with the Housing Trust Silicon Valley. They're gonna tell you about this new program that's kind of come out. If you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A box um, and we'll be able to answer any questions that you have at the end. We are recording this, so we'll send out a recording um, and get it posted to the SCORE uh, website. And we will also get a copy of these slides sent out um, early next week. So Bonnie and Sonia, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jody. Uh, welcome everyone. And thanks again, Jody, for giving us an opportunity to present information about our ADU construction loan program to your organization. So I'd like to start off uh, talking a little bit about um, Housing Trust and who we are. So Housing Trust is, for those of you who may or may not know, we are a nonprofit CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. Um, as an affordable housing lender, we are taking tackling the housing crisis from every angle, from helping the homeless uh, get off the streets, to financing affordable housing projects, multifamily developments, to assisting renters and first-time home buyers. And now with the newest program, we are helping homeowners create an affordable unit in their own backyard. So for some introductions, uh, some quick introductions, my name is Sonia Singha and I'm the mortgage loan officer for ADU construction loans at Housing Trust. And I'm joined here by my program associate, uh, Bonnie Chen. So let's start off by talking about how do you, how do I pay for your, uh, for, how do I pay for an ADU? Now the current financial options for homeowners who are looking to finance ADUs are very limited right now. The usual financing options are some of the following. Um, you can do a cash out refinance on your primary residence, get a home equity line of credit, uh, dip into your personal savings, get a loan from friends or family, or you can borrow from your retirement account. And most recently, there have been some uh, profit sharing and equity sharing options available as well. So as you can see, there is a gap between the current conventional financing options which are available and a lack of secondary mortgage construction financing. And our construction loan is designed to fill this gap. So I'll give you an overview of our uh, construction loan terms. The maximum amount that we're gonna be loaning uh, is $200,000 or 97% CLTV, which, uh, whichever is lower. And I'll get into the CLTV in a minute. Um, our loan is gonna be in a second lien position because of our licensing, we are uh, licensed to be in a second uh, lien position only. So we do require the homeowners who want this loan to have a current first mortgage on their property. Uh, the term of our loan is gonna be for 36 months or uh, three years. Now the first year will be the construction loan where the borrower will be making interest only payments uh, on the loan. During this time, the ADU will be constructed. And once the ADU is uh, constructed and built and rent, ran, rented out, then the loan converts to um, a permanent loan. In years two and three, your payments will convert to your regular monthly payments or uh, principal and interest, but they will be amortized over 20 years. Now the interest rate on the loan is gonna be at 5%. And going back to the CLTV, so, we are accepting homeowners uh, with a current first mortgage, um, they can have a loan to value of up to 80% LTV. So housing trust will lend an additional 17% on top of that to make it to a combined loan to value of 97% CLTV. Then continuing um, our construction loan terms, right now we're gonna be, I, I must mention that we, our program has not officially launched yet. We are in the process of making some final tweaks to the uh, program and it should be 
uh, launching very soon. So we'll keep you posted on that. But once it does launch, we're gonna be launching it as a pilot program. So initially it's only going to be available to all residents of Santa Clara County and East Palo Alto. The eligible costs uh, which will be covered for this loan are your hard construction costs. So hard costs um, directly related to the building structure, the site, the landscape, et cetera. Soft cost reimbursement for things like uh, permit fees, architectural um, engineering fees, they can be covered, but they have to be they have to be approved by housing trust on a case by case basis. So the expectation is that the borrower will be paying for all these soft costs upfront themselves. Um, and they can get reimbursed or they may get reimbursed after close of escrow if those, if those fees are approved by housing trust. We also have a two year affordability restriction on the loan. And under this restriction, the borrower must rent out the ADU to a qualified tenant. The qualification over here is that the tenants in, tenant must be making income up to 120% of the area median income. And this, is, uh, this income limit is set by the California Department of Housing and Community Development. And for 20 to this year, uh, this limit changes every year. For 2020, it is at 118,920. And so for it should be, we should be coming out with uh, the new limits probably by next week. And we have also established some rent uh, caps uh, for affordable housing. So if, if you are renting out, if you are building a, st a studio ADU in your backyard, you can rent it out for a maximum rent of uh, 1,982, a one bedroom at uh, 2266 and a two bedroom at 2589. Now the idea behind establishing these rental limits is to make these units more affordable and accessible to low to moderate income individuals or families who want to continue living in the area because otherwise they're priced out of the rental market because they cannot afford market rate rents. So that's kind of the thinking behind uh, setting up these rental limits. Now, one of the things we wanted to mention over here is uh, there are a couple of uh, very important points that usually come up in a discussion about ADUs and a lot of questions have been asked about this. So we kind of put it together in a slide form and thought we could address it. So for different entities in the lending uh, area, look at ADU loans, uh, ADUs differently. So for example, for the, the state law, for ADUs is set by the California, California Department of Housing and Community Development. They are the ones who set the state law. So the first column that you see over here is what the state law says. Fannie Mae, of course, as uh, most of you know, is a government sponsored entity and uh, all the conventional lenders sell their loans to Fannie Mae. And the third entity is Housing Trust. So just wanted to mention some points where some there are notable differences between the way these three entities are looking at some particular situations regarding ADUs. Now, the first, uh, the first point is what kind of ADU is allowed on the property? Now, as far as state law is concerned, state law allows you to have one ADU plus a J ADU or a junior ADU on the same a lot. However, Fannie Mae, does not allow you to do that and neither does our loan of uh, if you want to apply for our construction loan we both only allow one adu on a single family lot the second point is what is a jadu qualification now as far as the state is concerned again for jadus is any unit which is less than 500 square foot unit built within the existing walls of the single family residence and they're also allowed to share central systems. They must contain a basic kitchen and they may share a bathroom uh, with the primary dwelling. However, for Fannie Mae, it's a little bit different. A Fannie Mae will only consider a JADU as an ADU if it meets the definition of an independent unit. An independent unit would be an ADU which is completely independent of the primary residence and has basic bathroom cooking and sleeping facilities and means of ingress and egress. For housing trust, a JADU is not allowed because for us, it needs to be a net 
net new unit. That means a tenant should be able to live in the ADU without having to go into the main house. Uh, so that means uh, no shared kitchen or sanitation facility. So that is the reason we don't uh, offer our loans for JADUs. Now, the third point would be of some interest to you folks, uh, rental income qualification. Then there's a lot of controversy and interest about that. Um, Fannie Mae will only allow you to use the rental income from the ADU with the two-year seasoning, with the two-year history. And our loan gives you that because we, we provide you with that two-year rental income history with our loan. Because in the term of a loan, when, we, in the, when the loan converts to a permanent loan in years two and three, you're renting out your ADU for two years. So you have the two-year rental income history as well as the two-year landlord experience. And that is the reason we designed our loan in such a way for a three-year term so that at the end of the three years, you can go to a conventional lender and refinance it and they should be able to use that rental income. So to make it easier for the borrower. And the last point I wanna mention is that a lot of ADUs right now are being built these days um, using modular as well as manufactured homes. Now, both as far as state law is concerned, both of those units, um, state law allows both uh, modular as well as manufactured homes to be used at as ADUs. However, per Fannie Mae, a modular unit is allowed, but if it is a manufactured unit being used as an ADU, then it is allowed only if the primary residence is a stick-built home and it, and it complies to local building laws. Um, for housing trust, uh, modular units are allowed and manufactured units are allowed if they are permanently fixed to the foundation and they're considered as real property. So I thought this would be of some interest to you guys because a lot of realtors have asked us these questions in the past. So I just wanted to cover that with you. In the next slide, let's start talking about how you can qualify for our loan. So there are two parts to the qualification. The first part is financial readiness and the second part is project readiness. I'll go over the financial readiness terms and then Bonnie will take over from there and go over the project readiness uh, terms. So for financial readiness, you must meet, uh, when I say you, I mean the borrower, the borrower must meet the following criteria. Um, they must have a first mortgage, which is a 15 or a 30 year, or even a 20 or 25 year fixed mortgage, but it has to be a fixed mortgage. Um, as a borrower, your name must show on the property title and you must own or occupy the property. We are currently not allowing this loan for any investment properties. Uh, number three, the borrower on the loan, all borrowers on the loan must have a minimum FICO score of 680. And the last thing is that you must have sufficient income to make mortgage payments on two loans because you're making, you're already making a first mortgage payment and then you're making a second mortgage payment uh, on our second, on the second loan. And we also require to show six months of reserves. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bonnie who will go over the project readiness guidelines. Thank you, Sonia. So we, in addition to the financial readiness guidelines, we also have project readiness guidelines. And to start off with, we do have an education requirement um, just because we want um, the homeowners to be educated throughout the process as well as have landlord experience. So they must attend at least two of our educational webinars. We're gonna host info sessions every month and um, other modules that where we invite um, third parties like City of San Jose for permitting information or contractors to help with um, questions about construction. So you must attend at least two of these webinars or one in-person workshop. But uh, for now, the in-person workshops are on pause due to COVID. Um, the second uh, education requirement is that they must prove that they have property management experience. So they have the option of first taking a landlord certification course um, that will be uh, $99 and it'll go over uh, fair housing laws in California. Or they can prove that they can, uh, have two years of rent rule um, where they already have landlord experience. Or they can show that they will be hiring a third party property management company to um, 
manage the ADU for them. So this is uh, because we want the landlord to be aware of their housing laws when they are renting the ADU to the tenant. The second one, as mentioned before, is that uh, the ADU must be either a detached or garage conversion. And this program is only available in Santa Clara County or East Palo Alto. The third is that we do require that the homeowner works with a qualified builder according to our guidelines. So these guidelines include that the builder must have at least five years of residential construction experience in the state of California. They must have completed at least two ADUs in the Bay Area. They have to have a provided evidence of an active ADU project pipeline and five positive client interactions. So this can be a mixture of um, online reviews like on Yelp and Google or uh, written references. And lastly, most importantly, they have to have their building permit issued by the city already. Um, we're not accepting uh, applications with people who have just applied because the permitting process could take a long time. And uh, we want the, after loan closing, they have to be ready to start construction within 90 days. So that's why we do have this requirement. And next, I wanna go over some benefits of the Housing Trust uh, ADU construction loan program. Um, we do have some unique features that other lenders are not um, providing. Um, this construction loans, as mentioned before, is a three-year loan. Um, the, sec the last two years, the um, borrower must rent the ADU out to a tenant at an affordable rate, so that provides the landlord experience and rental income that allows uh, the borrower to refinance easier at the end of the third year with a conventional lender. And also we allow the use of the future value of the property to qualify for the loan with the ADU built. Uh, other benefits for the borrower is that they are creating an extra source of income by renting out the ADU. We do have a reasonably fixed interest rate and most importantly, they are helping, uh, helping being part of the solution in the Bay Area housing crisis by creating an affordable unit in their own backyard. So why are you here? Why, why does this um, information benefit realtors? So um, after 2020, when all the new ADU laws come out, came out, it's easier than ever to build an ADU now. And with COVID and quarantine, we found that the demand for ADUs has grown because people need more space, they're staying at home more. Um, so uh, the demand for ADUs and properties with ADU potential uh, has increased. ADUs are good for small households that are just getting started. They're good for empty nesters who are downsizing and want to stay in their neighborhood and maybe rent out their uh, main home and stay in the ADU. They're also good for people who want uh, rental income to live in a pricier neighborhood. And they're also good for people who want to age in place. Um, and we're also finding that people are building ADUs for office space and multi-generational housing. So understanding all these financial, legal, and logistical issues surrounding ADUs and having an increased knowledge for your potential buyers is very beneficial. Uh, we want to uh, mention that we are going to have more um, webinars and events in the future. So on our website, we have a contact list and you can sign up as an industry professional to get announcements from us. On the bottom of our website, we do have program guidelines, FAQs, and term sheets in case you wanna print them out and provide them to your clients. And um, there are ADU resources and materials on the uh, California Association of Victor website. And I can uh, put this link in the chat in a few minutes. I also wanted to show you this uh, quick infographic we have on, available on our website in PDF form. Uh, you can print this out. Uh, and provide this to your clients. Um, this infographic shows how to get started with a loan with us.
And with that, we want to go into our Q&A. Um, if you have any other questions that you don't want to ask here, uh, you can always email us at um, adu at housingtrustsv.org, or you can email us individually. Um, Sonia and I's uh, information is right here. And uh, any of these emails work. So with that, we'll get started. Hey, Sonia, I saw a couple questions um, that you answered in the Q&A box. Did you want to answer those also out loud, just in case anybody else um, possibly had uh, those same questions? Sure. So I think one of the questions that was asked was, is the CLTB the value after construction? Um, no, the CLTB value is actually calculated at the time of loan application when the app, when the borrower applies for a loan. That's the time we will determine the amount of the CLTV. And if forever, you know, once the appraisal uh, is done and then we get another value, if there's a huge discrepancy in the value, then we might have to adjust the loan amount at that point. But usually that's not what we're expecting. But the initial uh, CLTV is um, calculated when the loan application comes in. Um, the second question was, can we get these loans through our preferred mortgage broker? Um, not currently. Um, we are when we launch uh, as a pilot program, we will be uh, the borrower will have to apply um, directly to housing trust to get this loan. And let's see what the third question. So third question was, so these loans are for after a property is acquired. It is not a second loan we can submit with an offer for a buyer. Yes, so we do expect uh, our loans do require that the borrower have a current first mortgage in place. So that means if you're putting in a, an offer uh, for your buyer with a property with the potential to build an ADU, and that's the reason these loans cannot, um, your loan for your prop buyer's property that he's buying and the loan for the ADU cannot be done, can, cannot close concurrently because to get an ADU permit, you have to, you know, it takes a long time to get your designs made, choose your builder, and uh, get all those get the permit in place so that's why we have uh, that's the reason both these closings cannot happen concurrently so um if there's any other questions i'd be happy to answer yep there's one in here for module home uh how is how is 3d printing so we are allowing uh, 3D printing also, that'll all depend on if they're allowed by a local jurisdiction, then they will be allowed by us. Um, and of course, we do wanna mention that I, I'm sure we did, uh, uh, Bonnie did mention that in project readiness, but do want to reiterate that we do have some, um, a string, not stringent, but we do have some uh, builder guidelines that we, we do expect the contractor to adhere to. And the reason for that is because we want to make sure that the, the contractor that you're choosing, your borrower is choosing, has not only has residential construction experience, of course, but also has, uh, has experience building to ADUs in the market. So we do um, you know, share those uh, requirements with the homeowner or, or the builder. We'd be happy to work directly with the builder also because there's a lot of detailed questions we ask. We wanna make sure that they have that experience and, and they can see the whole project through for your, uh, for your buyers. Yes, SCORE, we did a webinar um, with Habitat, I believe, or Hab yeah, Habitat, uh, which is they're building ADUs. And, and um, so it's good to go with somebody to your point that has that experience. Um, the question is, can you get pre-approved before the permit? No. And the reason again for that is because perm sometimes permitting can take a long time. Uh, unexpected delays can happen. You may be asked to revise your plan by the city. So there's too many variables out there. So that's why we are requiring homeowners to come to us once they have their permit in hand. So, and the pre-approval, even if we were to give you a pre-approval, it would not, it would expire. So we would have to go through the whole process again. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I think it's, um, I think it's very smart of you guys and, and probably eye-opening to some people to take those property management experience classes. Yeah. Um, I think becoming a landlord, especially during COVID, 
yes. um, has shocked a lot of people with um, the rights of, um, you know, home ownership and, and what you can and can't do on your property with, um, with tenants. So um, I applaud you guys for, for adding that um, extra layer in there for people. Yeah, because um, the Bay Area homeowners are pretty savvy these days and, you know, everybody knows a little bit about investments, but actually knowing, having a general idea of how to be an investor versus actually being a landlord and adhering and following those fair housing laws, what you can do with your tenant or cannot do, you know, and, and not to get into kind of a lawsuit come to, uh, situation with them. That's, that's the whole idea that we want that homeowner to have that education piece in place. Yeah. Um, so there's a question. Um, so I, you guys are putting on these webinars about uh, becoming a landlord and things like that. I think you guys had the $99 certificate fee. Is that open to just people that are taking this, uh, that are getting this um, uh, ADU permit or can anybody attend that? I'll let Bonnie answer that. Um, it's actually on a website called landlordcert.com. I can put the link uh, in the chat right now. Um, so it's a third party uh, certification course. It will not be held by us. Okay. So yes, you anybody can- so Anybody um, can take that course, yeah. Perfect, okay. Does anybody else have any more um, questions? And Bonnie just, oh, um, I'm gonna copy and paste that so it goes to all the attendees as well. Thank you. I didn't yep. realize it was just two panelists. Nope, that's okay. okay. So there's that link if, if you wanna um, take that course um, that they mentioned. Any other questions that anybody has? Yep, one more just came in. Yes, we did record this um, and we will be getting that up on the SCORE website. Um, and Bonnie just put in the CAR website for um, ADUs as well. So yes, this is recorded. They're gonna get me a copy of the slides as well um, early next week. Um, let's see. I did want to mention one more thing just as a sidebar uh, because you know people have, uh, that usually comes up in the Q and A. Um, borrowers who want to build an ADU I usually want to know how it's gonna affect their taxes. Um, so building an ADU does affect your taxes. It will increase your taxes, but only incrementally. It's not going to have a, it, there's not going to be a complete reassessment of your property value uh, at tax time. So you will only be taxed for the, uh, your tax will only increase by that percentage. And usually for ADUs, it's about, it runs at about 1% of the construction costs. So if your, um, if your construction cost is $100,000, it would be approximately $1,000 additional that you would be paying on your taxes. Sorry, a couple more questions are coming in. Um, I'm gonna ask the ADU one and then Sheila, I'll ask yours in a second. Um, any chance increase the loan, that you can increase the loan amount of uh, $200,000 um, because that may not cover the cost of an ADU? Right, and that's very probably true in this area. <laughs> As you all know, property prices are through the roof. But again, for us, we are launching it as a pilot program. So what that means is that we are going to test out the market, uh, you know, do a few loans and then see if there is a very high demand or request from homeowners to increase the loan amount, then we are definitely going to be open to doing that. But um, for the first launch, initial launch, it is set at 200,000. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you guys can answer this question, um, but do you offer uh, a free eight hour class for first time home buyers or would that be more like we were talking about earlier with um, Adeline and Adria? Yeah, it would be with Adria's group, but um, so you would have to check with them. Okay. Um, while we're wrapping, Sheila, if anybody has any more questions, otherwise I'm going to see if I can't find um, their, let's see, their website and then Sheila, um, uh, you can contact them. And I know that we partner with them a lot um, with Adrian, and Adeline in that group. So I'll see if I can find the link. But does anybody else have um, any more questions coming in? Um, is there, is there, 
no is there any loan programs on the property if the pay, if the property's paid off um can they still qualify for a loan um no unfortunately not because we are licensed to be in a second lien position so we do require the homeowner to have a first mortgage on the property okay um and i'm putting the link to your um event calendar in the link right now um so this is for the housing trust event links um and this this talks about all of the different um events that you guys do. Um, I'm trying to see how I can get to June. So I don't see any on here, um, but I suggest that you do look um, look for, uh, look, check out their website in general um, and you may be able to find an upcoming class. And then check, you know, keep watching the score emails. We do a lot of um, first time home buyer class sometimes as well with Adria through Housing Trust. And so um, affordable, um, May is affordable housing month and mm -hmm. uh, we are partnered with um, SV at home to host quite a few of affordable housing events. And if any of you are interested, we are gonna be uh, doing a similar uh, webinar on May 26th is our webinar. And um, Bonnie can share that calendar link with you also as well. Yep, I see that one. Um, and then May 27th, that's in, I'm just looking at your event calendar to see if, if there's anything else coming up. Um, so I'm also going to just put the link to housing trust in general in the chat box and you guys can check that out as well. Um, so does anybody have any more questions? Otherwise, um, that was a lot of really great information this afternoon. No, it doesn't work. Awesome. Well, Thank you so much, Jody. I, we really appreciate the opportunity again. And again, to all the attendees, thank you for attending. And please feel free to reach out.